Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to turn it over to David Crow, um, who is a co-moderator for the session, and he's got a little bit of housekeeping and stuff to do before we get started. David, it's yours. Yeah, hi, welcome everybody. Um, so uh, something that's quite important for our speakers here is if you remember to um, fill out the survey at the end of this talk, um, this will provide them with really helpful feedback. Um, this session will be recorded and you'll have access to it through the uh, WHO uh, VA app at the, um, I believe in a few days. Um, and so when you ask your questions, we'll be answering them at the end of the session once everyone has presented. And um, you can post them in the Zoom chat um, or the online WHO VA portal, uh, and we will get to your questions. Uh, and then here is the link to the survey. And um, back to Denise, and she'll introduce our speakers. And uh, wonderful. Um, I think we've got Clemson University, the Bridge to the Doctorate, uh, representing the Bridge to the Doctorate program, um, is Dr. Cindy Lee. We've got, um, I guess, in alphabetical order. Have we seen the folks from University of Arkansas? David? Uh, not yet. Okay. And then from University of Texas at El Paso, we have Dr. Benjamin Flores, who's going to represent the um, programs here at UTEP, given that I'm here too. <laughs> um, but if we do it in alphabetical order, um, I think uh, Dr. Lee will take you first, given that it's Clemson University, as opposed to the University of. Um, <laughs> And um, certainly we're looking forward to all of the presentations because of the number of people who are actually presenting. We've got a little bit of extra time for you to do what you need to do. So your seven minutes is gonna be okay. Um, uh, but Dr. Lee, if you would like to proceed with your information about your program, your campus and lessons learned, that would be awesome. You're mute. I'm gonna... Uh, attempt to share my slides here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to share my screen and get there. So thank, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, we are new to the Bridge to Doctorate programs. Uh, we're recruiting our first ever class um, for the fall of 2022. Uh, so I may not be able to contribute a lot to the best practices discussion yet until we have a little more practice, but um, we're excited to be part of this, this program and look forward to it. Uh, um, so... Clemson is uh, a public institution. Sometimes given our name, people think that we are a private institution, but we are a public institution located in the northwestern part of the state of South Carolina. We're R1 and a land grant uh, university in South Carolina. There's a little more than 20,000 uh, undergraduate students at Clemson as of the fall of 2020. Um, and we had 5,500 um, approximately graduate students um, at that time. About 7% of our graduate students identify as, as Black and about 4% identify as Hispanic. So we're predominantly a white institution. Uh, so our Bridge to the Doctorate is um, based on the area of advanced materials research, and we're building on a firm foundation of professional development tools, such as our Grad 360 program, and also an extensive network of peer, professional, and academic mentoring. So Grad 360, which you can see the logo here, um, provides a, a, a series of of comprehensive resources that are dedicated to educating and developing the necessary skills for future professionals and leaders in the global economy. So the idea is that there are, are nine, the Tiger Nine different proficiencies in academic, personal and professional focus areas and, and students can design their own development program. Our, 
um, advisors for the um, bridge to doctorate scholars will will go through mentorship training and will have experience in culturally relevant mentoring practices. So advanced materials is one of our um, research emphasis uh, areas in uh, um, the university. So it has an enabling role in each of the other areas in its interdisciplinary in nature. Uh, for the Clemson Bridge to Doctorate program, there are 12 departments involved across two colleges, uh, the College of Engineering, Computing, and Applied Sciences, and also the College of Science, uh, where students can conduct, conduct research um, based in advanced materials. So this was built around a uh, NSF EPSCOR um, um, grant that was made to the state of South Carolina, and we call it the Made in South Carolina um, project. It, it's, as I said, with statewide, uh, Dr. Raj Bordier is serving as its science director, and he is also the head of our leadership team for the Bridge to Doctorate program. Um, the Made in South Carolina has three research thrusts uh, that focus on either nanoparticle assembly uh, and materials with electronic structures or um, the control of molecular structure and bonds, how, how those are um, uh, controlled and put together, and then also controlled assembly at, at the molecular level. So the idea is that researchers from several disciplines are working across um, the whole range of scales and using data science and artificial intelligence to accelerate discovery and development of, of materials. So the idea is to um, use an iterative model that uses experiments, theory, modeling, and simulation so that the students can get a, a wide variety of experiences and skills um, through this research area. So I'd like you to, um, I invite you to listen to something we have going on, some podcast series called CCAST. And um, the third episode is uh, discussing the Black CCAST graduate experience. So that would be of, of interest to um, people interested in our program. Um, a potential best practice, like I said, we're just getting started, is the fact that we have had um, some programs in place like the STEM All In Scholars. And my colleague, Tanya Stewart, is with us today, and she is the director of the STEM All In and also our graduate recruiting. Um, so the STEM All In is in its fourth year. Um, we've had three on-campus events. Uh, and last year, of course, with, the, with COVID, we were were virtual. We currently have six students uh, from the STEM All In program on campus now. We have one in their in their fourth year, one in their third year, two in their second year, and two in their first year. Um, so overall, we've had 60 students attend uh, in the last three years. Some decide um, to go to other institutions or straight into industry, um, but those that have chose other institutions indicate on our evaluations that they have learned about the whole process of applying and feel more secure in, in making that um, application to graduate school. So although we, we haven't captured all of them here at Clemson, we're, we're very happy to have them uh, in graduate schools of their, of their choice. So. Uh, we do have applications open now for the January in-person event, and we do have funds to support uh, travel um, for attendance. There'll also be a link to the STEM All In um, uh, event to the Bridge to Doctorate program. And we will also include uh, the GEM Fellows that we have on campus, and, and they have um, internships in industry. So I think this will uh, help build a cohort and have um, some critical mass uh, by combining essentially these, these three programs. So it, here's a website for you to, to see our flyer. 
Uh, I'm Cindy Lee. I'm chair of engineering and science education, uh, and I'm one of the leader, uh, leaders of the uh, bridge to the doctorate here. Oliver Myers is our associate dean for inclusive excellence uh, in, in the college. Tanya Stewart, as I said, is here and director of uh, graduate recruiting and uh, inclusive excellence. And Raj Bordier is um, the leader of our team, and he is a professor in materials science and engineering. So I'm, I'll be happy to answer questions later on when we um, uh, have time for questions, and I'll be very interested in, in, in hearing what everybody has, has to say uh, about their programs. And David, thank you for putting our, our website in the chat. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Lee. Very well done. Thank you very much. Um, uh, David, do we have the University of Arkansas yet? Um, I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yes, we do. Um, he's here. Yeah, sorry. Um, sorry about that. I just had a crazy day, but I'm here. <laughs> okay, good enough. Uh, Dr. Alma Duvar, if you could um, do us a favor, give us your presentation, please. Sure, yeah, so. Uh, Tell us all about Fayetteville. I will. Um, let me. So I don't have slides per se, um, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit and then show uh, our website. And I'm gonna put in the, the website on the chat where, where folks can, um, can um, go ahead and, and see what uh, we all have. But um, yeah, let me just share my screen here for a second. Um, all right, so can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, so yeah, so I'm Jorge Molovar, so I'm part of the uh, leadership here at the University of Arkansas um, you know, Bridge to the Doctorate program. Um, we are a, a, a new uh, Bridge to the Doctorate program. Uh, it's the first time that uh, LS, Arkansas LSAMP uh, it's, it has, has obtained uh, this, uh, this, this funding, so we're very happy to, to help launch it. Um, and, and started uh, our first cohort uh, this this year, this fall semester. Um, so, I mean, not 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 a whole lot to say uh, about other uh, about the British to doctorate program itself. That's different from other programs, right? We're recruiting uh, uh, twelve uh, uh, students. Um, we have a very broad. Um, areas of, of STEM that are being offered at the University of Arkansas. Uh, pretty much any engineering program that you can think of. And then um, the life sciences, we have uh, pretty much everything as well, right? Uh, chemistry, biology, cell molecular biology. Uh, so we're, we're really uh, quite open uh, as far as uh, STEM uh, degrees go. Um, we, we do have uh, open slots for, for our, our, our program, our current cohort. Uh, so we are recruiting for, for either next spring or next fall uh, for, for spring uh, 2022 enrollment. Uh, we're, we're, it's not a hard deadline, but we're looking at a November 1st um, uh, deadline. Um, we, we could probably work with that a little bit, if there's any uh, students out there interested that, that may not be able to make that deadline. Um, and then for fall 2022, we have a February 1st uh, um, soft deadline as well. Um, again, as far as the British doctorate goes, uh, $32,000 uh, 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 per, per the stipend, um, tuitions and fees, uh, and health insurance. Um, we are doing, you know, individualized mentoring and support. So we, you know, this semester we started um, um, both uh, group activities and individualized mentoring for, for our LSM student, um, our British doctorate student, uh, not only through, the, through their PIs, but also through the, through the um, British doctorate team. Uh, so we, we secured mentors that are um, not necessarily the PI of each of the um, of the fellows, so that they have you know more support 
uh, throughout their their um, doctorate degree. Um, so so yeah, and and you know Fayetteville is great. Um, there's it has a lot to offer. Uh, Northwest Arkansas is is, is sort of I, I, I like to say it's its own little bubble. Uh, there's there's uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, great art and food scene. There's um, a lot of uh, nature uh, and, and outdoors activities to be done. Uh, I guess uh, I, I can't speak a whole lot to it because I don't do it, but mountain biking is, is pretty big here. Uh, so it, it attracts a lot of people uh, to, to this area. Um, and we have a, a fairly good economy with, with you know, a lot of industry here. Uh, of course, uh, Walmart uh, being the, the biggest uh, player here, but there's also uh, Tyson and J.B. Hunt, and so they support a lot of the uh, uh, activities at the university. Uh, and there's also a lot of, uh, it's a big area for, for small business and, and entrepreneurship and uh, developing, um, you know, um, um, small companies and commercialization of research. And so, and I can attest to that as a researcher that, that you know, we, the, the university cares about that and move and, and, and wants to train our students not only to do good research, but also to to commercialize said research and then, you know, have a have a broad training uh, uh, so that, you know, that they can uh, um, be well pre prepared once they are finished their um, PhDs. Um, so yeah, so my contact info is, is in the website, feel free to email me, um, or reach out by phone, um, and yeah, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer now or, or later, however you all want. So thank you for the space, uh, and thank you for letting me talk for a little bit, and, and, and again, I apologize for my tardiness. Oh, not to worry. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I think we're going to have time. Uh, actually to uh, have those questions at the end. Okay. Um, and I, I would encourage the audience to put together the questions that you have. And David, if you could keep track of the questions that are in the chat, that would be great. Um, I don't know if anybody else is like me, but if I don't ask the question right away, it goes away. So <laughs> I don't know whether that's a, a good or a bad sign, <laughs> but in any event, uh, Dr. Flores, um, if you could. Absolutely, Denise. Good afternoon, everybody, or morning, depending on where you may be. Uh, my name is Ben Flores. I'm the uh, principal investigator and uh, director of the University of Texas uh, System, Lewis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation. And I am delighted to see so many faces today that I have joined our session. I am going to share my screen and hopefully it will work just fine. So if you give me a heads up, uh, thumbs up, yes, everything's working well. Okay, very good. Uh, and I always wanna move a few of these icons here on the, on the side. Okay, well, let me just say a couple of things about our university first. Uh, the University of Texas at El Paso, which is part of the University of Texas system and the lead institution of the UT system LSM is an R1 institution. We were designated back in 2019 as an R1 institution. We are one of the largest Hispanic majority institutions in the United States. Uh, we always talk about Puerto Rico being our, our model but uh, essentially Puerto Rico is uh, far away from us. We are in far west Texas. Um, we are right smack in the middle between Houston and San Diego, California, just to give you an idea of where we are uh, located geographically. Uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, we are one of eight UT system universities. We are located on the US-Mexico border. So if you look at the picture that I have uh, posted here, you can see the US flag, the Texas flag, and in the distance, you're going to see some mountains and all the houses that you see there are in Mexico. 
So we are on the border, okay? Um, back in uh, the 1970s, we only had one doctoral degree and that doctoral degree was in, in uh, geology. Uh, we were prevented from having more PhD programs until there was a lawsuit by Maldef. Uh, and in 1990, we were able to start our second PhD program in electrical and computer engineering, which I'm very proud to be a faculty member of. Uh, today, we have 23 PhD programs, and the large majority of these programs are in STEM disciplines, just to give you an idea of how strong engineering and science uh, are on our campus. Okay, very well. So, the, the bridge to doctor program that I'm going to talk about is a program that just concluded this year. Uh, we started back in 2018 and we closed our books this, uh, this semester actually. Uh, we have a, we have a, of a multidisciplinary cohort of students representing a number of our PhD programs. As uh, you may suspect from the list, you know, biology is perhaps one of the strongest PhD programs that we have on campus in terms of student enrollment. So we have four BD fellows that are in biology, one in civil engineering, one in environmental science, two in material science and engineering. And by the way, environmental science and material science and engineering are interdisciplinary programs. Uh, three in mechanical engineering, one in social psychology. And as far as uh, representation from underrepresented groups, we have 11 uh, Hispanic or Latino students, two women in engineering, and one armed forces veteran. So we've uh, made a concerted effort over the years of reaching out to our undergraduate students who participate in LSM, who happen to be U.S. Uh, uh, Armed Forces veterans to stick around, go to not only finish their baccalaureate degree, but also uh, pursue their, their graduate degree. And we've been very successful in, in reaching out to a number of students and they have enrolled in graduate programs. And this time around, we were very happy that we could have a veteran in, in our group. So we're reach, well, reaching, trying to be diverse in many ways. Um, as far as our bridge to the doctorate model, uh, we have a number of elements that we consider to be key. And one of them is that we always start with laboratory visit, visits. Uh, the, whether we do that in the first semester, continue that through the second semester, we want our students to place in settings that will engage them in research from the onset. We have, um, uh, we, ha we have uh, weekly seminars. We ask our students to enroll in a seminar for credit. So uh, our students participate and we engage them directly. Uh, I myself, myself and I. Uh, Dr. Knaust and uh, Ms. Ariana Arciero, who is the director of the UT System LSM, or associate director, I should say. She, uh, she and, and Dr. Knaust and I work with our students uh, on a weekly basis. We touch base with them and we have also online group meetings. Uh, we share uh, mental health resources. We, thought that during COVID times, this was an essential activity. So uh, we've been keeping track of them, making sure that they're feeling okay and that they have access to our, our institutional resources. Um, Ms. Arciero does a wonderful job with institute, individual consultations. And uh, we, uh, we have students who reach out to the professors as well. Uh, we have a strong evaluation component led by Dr. Schemberger-Trujillo. Uh, 
in which we have end of sem end of term uh, surveys. So every time that we had a, a seminar uh, in a semester, we had surveys to tag along so that we could assess uh, how well we were doing and what were the needs of our of our doctoral students. Uh, we've encouraged uh, social gatherings, although um, we have been doing this in past cohorts with the pandemic, this became a serious issue, but we tried to think uh, creatively and uh, Last, uh, last semester, we actually had our students, was, I think it was in the spring semester, that we reached out to the students while they were still at home and we managed to deliver to them ice cream so that we could have a, a, you know, a virtual gathering and everybody could share their ice cream and we can also play uh, the equivalent of Mexican bingo. So that was a lot of fun. Um, so <laughs> you like that, Denise, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. So we, you know, we always like to have social gatherings. We, we uh, re recognize that uh, social academic integration never ends. That work is always continuous. And we always do housekeeping with, with our dissertation advisors and uh, again, uh, kudos to Ms. Arcio for taking care of that piece. And we have to make sure that we uh, follow COVID restrictions. Now, regardless of all of the problems that we have had, our cohort has been extremely successful. You can look at the products that they have produced. We have 21 journal publications so far with 12 conference presentations, four of our 12 uh, students now are now candidates for the PhD. That means they're no longer taking courses. They pass their qualifier exam examinations if they had them. And uh, they're now uh, working full-time as researchers in getting their dissertations done. We have, in addition, two students who are defending uh, their uh, dissertation proposals this fall. Uh, Three of them have, uh, from the engineering side, have had industrial internships for a total of six. So we encourage our students to, if they think this is going to help them with their dissertation, to uh, pursue uh, internships in industry. That doesn't necessarily work in science and uh, opportunities are, are much more limited, but do our students do have opportunities, like one of them uh, was able to uh, visit uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory in Northern New Mexico. And now he has essentially uh, a fellowship from Los Alamos from the Department of Energy to complete his, his PhD. Um, our students also pursue other uh, sources of funding. So they have, one of them has a graduate research fellowship from the National Science Foundation. Two of our students have uh, excellence fellowships from our university. And we, the graduate school has offered in-state tuition waivers to all of them essentially. And only nine of them needed it. So you know, that's, that's what happened. Of course, you know, we have our requirements for in-state and literally, you know, after the end of the second year, all of our uh, PhD fellows who are full-time students uh, also um, are eligible for in-state tuition so they don't have to pay uh, higher uh, rates. So that's what our, our, bridge to the doctor model looks like for right now, you know, uh, in terms of lessons learned, uh, one of the things that we have uh, promoted through the years is that mentoring is not a one-to-one -one proposition. We can offer mentoring on the side. We don't have to be the dissertation advisors to provide mentoring. So we feel very strongly that 
the more communication we have with the students, the more support we provide them, the more that we become uh, validators of their efforts, uh, the better the better they they will be served in the end. Uh, also, we know that financial support in the first years of PhD studies is always a priority. It's first and foremost in the mind of our PhD students. So uh, we recognize that the bridge to the doctorate program does exactly what students need, which is to provide support for those students. So they don't have to worry about uh, support while they're studying uh, or their curriculums and their PhDs, okay. Also, another piece that we feel is really important is early engagement in research. Um, STEM, the STEM disciplines really require this and it's, it can be very different from other PhDs or doctoral programs where students are professionals and uh, come to the university in the evenings. Uh, our students are essentially on campus most of the time, you know, from early in the morning till er, er, uh, late in the evening. And that's what's needed for our students to, to complete their PhD. So it's, uh, it, it's a different proposition for them. Having a positive relationship with their dissertation advisors is, becomes a priority in the latter years. So it's uh, important that we, uh, monitor those relationships that uh, students have with their advisors. If there's signs of uh, relationships cracking, then you know, that's when uh, Ms. Arciero comes in and she really uh, pounds in the idea that they need to consider their options. Not, not to give up, but to consider their options. And I think that message comes uh, loud and clear. We have seen over the years, and not just for this particular cohort, but for several of the cohorts that we have had at our university and other sister universities in the system that completion rates are improved with respect to what the Council of Graduate Schools uh, reports in their PhD completion project. We know that minority students can spend anywhere between six and eight years in their PhDs. We also know that if they don't finish in eight years, they're probably not going to finish their PhD. And we know also that time to completion can be improved significantly if we have support structures. So um, those are the, the main lessons learned, the key points I would say. I would only add that uh, during the pandemic, uh, if we've learned anything is that institutions need to have a strong PhD support infrastructure. And they also, we also need to have a cohesive leadership team ready to act when our students need us the most. So, I'm going to end by showing you some very smiley faces. Those are our doctoral students, you know, and at the University of Texas El Paso that are part of the bridge to the doctorate. And I'll be more than glad to entertain any questions after we're done with the presentations. Back to you, Denise. Thanks, Dr. Flores. Very good presentation, um, interesting, et cetera. Um, I believe uh, Ms. Arciero uh, added um, the website for um, the University of Texas LSM in the chat. If you should happen to want to get in touch with anybody who is um, associated or a part of the leadership. Um, David, uh, there is a question for Dr. Flores. Uh, yeah, I'm mean, get started uh, now, I guess, in reverse order would make more sense conceptually. Um, so yeah, question from Cindy Lee to Dr. Flores. Um, did you recruit all 12 of uh, your students in the first year, or were they recruited over um, several years? Um, and were they already enrolled in graduate programs at the University of Texas at El Paso? That's a really good question, because I know that many uh, Bridge to the Doctor programs have a, a significant challenge when it comes down to recruiting students. We are very fortunate in the sense that we are a 
minority majority serving institutions. So we have a significant number of students who are always who come from underrepresented groups who are always interested in, in participating in our PhD programs and they do enroll. We always seek our students who are just getting started. Okay, so we don't necessarily get the funding from the National Science Foundation on time, you know, or just in time, I would say, for the start of the fall semester. But with this particular cohort, we were able to recruit all of them so that they could start in the fall semester right after we got the funding. So that helped out. Now, I will not say that all of them uh, came from our university because we did have students coming from Puerto Rico, from uh, uh, Alaska, from California, uh, but all of them were fully aware of LSM, and I think that's key. You know, if they are at their home institutions and they have participated in undergraduate research or other LSM activities, then those are our prime targets. Those are the students that we that we are seeking first. Of course, we ask them to, regardless of whether they get funding or not, uh, to apply to the program. And most of our programs have deadlines in the spring semester, or some of them actually have deadlines in the summer. So it, it's also encouraging to see that we can have the late bloomers, you know, if they have the opportunity to apply as well. Very good question. Thank you. I hope I answered it. Um, and then one question from Sarah Gangura. Has there been a great increase in women uh, in the engineering field at the University of Texas at El Paso? Another great question, because we know that engineering is a male-dominated uh, set of disciplines. So uh, we have seen uh, increases in some programs, not in all of them. Okay. Uh, there are sort of programs like biomedical engineering or civil engineering, which are, I would say, able to um, express more clearly what the societal context of engineering is, uh, so that uh, young women uh, who are interested in graduate studies can then hone in on that message. Uh, it's harder in other disciplines, you know, in, in electrical engineering or mechanical engineering, where essentially the message is still is toys for boys, which is very unfortunate, but that's what, what, what this, our students are hearing. And then in those instances, we, we, have, we struggle at the undergraduate level, you know. So we're, when we reach 25%, uh, you know, uh, one, in every four students being uh, a female student in, in some of the, our engineering programs, we, we say, okay, we reach critical mass and then we can start thinking more positively about the future, but that continues to be a challenge. Okay, one final question uh, for you, Dr. Flores. Uh, are there any open house opportunities at the University of Texas at El Paso for other BD programs um, for them to be able to recruit students. So you mean, uh, as, as in visiting our university to, to explore possibilities? Yeah. That is something that we are working with. And we're very fortunate to have now Denise Yates on our campus because with her, I think that we can, we can really explore those opportunities. Uh, you have to remember that, you know, we are a public university and we have historically have uh, had limited resources, but as an R1 institution, we are really changing our way of thinking and uh, the graduate school is also helping out with that. But uh, we intend to have these type of opportunities for the next cohort. Um, David, if I could field a couple of questions. One of them is that um, I think this is from Mary Darrell. Um, we found BD programs to have relatively short application deadlines, making it difficult to promote and or for students to apply. Are BD programs generally serving local students who choose to continue their LSM participation locally? Is there a central listing of BD opportunities? Now there's 
Let me start at the bottom of that and say, is there a central list? If you go to lsmrce.org, which is the Lewis Stokes Midwest Center um, of Excellence, Regional Center of Excellence, you'll find a tab for the LSAMP community that will map all of the LSAMP alliances and all of the active BDs. So if you go to, and David's, David has keyed in that, that URL, uh, that will tell you a great deal about uh, who is um, LSAMP, uh, right down to listing the contacts for the lead institutions. And then you can go to those pages and find the member institutions that are there. Uh, you asked the question, are BD programs generally serving local students who continue uh, uh, their LSAMP participation? Uh, LSAMPs recruit very differently. Uh, the UTEP uh, system uh, LSAMP uh, or the UT system LSAMP is actually looking at broadening the recruitment base uh, to, more, um, to more nationally represented uh, alliances. And I can tell you that from the alliance I just came from, uh, we recruited BD students from 19 different alliances. So that answer is no. Yes, sir. We've got three minutes, Dr. Flores. Okay, it, I, it will only take uh, 30 seconds. And I ah, just wanna no. say that we have uh, a history of sharing our BD programs statewide. So UTIP is not the only institution that offers bridge to the doctor. So we tend to alternate. So the most current BD program is at UT Dallas. And a previous one we had was at UT Arlington. So we do share with our sister institutions and that helps, you know, having different geographical areas and being able to serve them. That's all, thank you. Okay, and and um, Dr. Dr. Darrell, um, thank you. Um, hopefully we answered those questions for you. Farah from the University of Texas or University of Kentucky, uh, for the Kentucky West, is it Kentucky West Virginia, Farah? I believe you can un unmute. Can we get, can we um, let her unmute or no? Thank you in any event for your. Yes, yes, it is Kentucky West Virginia. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> All right, sounds great. David, have we still got two minutes left or are we, are we skirting with uh, being disconnected? Uh, I think we have a good 120 seconds if we want to milk more questions. Otherwise, oh, thank good. you. Oh, for the absolutely more questions. Yeah, I'm not quite seeing any more um, out there. Uh, Cindy Lee did ask a question um, asking for advice on recruiting students to the BD program. Um, Cindy, we can do that offline if you'd like. That's, a, that's not a bad thing, but I, I should say to both you and Dr. Almodovar that um, two of the best recruiting places for the BD are at SACNAS, the Society for the Advancement of Chicanos and Native Americans in Science. Uh, they're at SACNAS.org and ABRCMS, which is the Annual Biomedical Research Conference for Minority Students. Uh, each of those conferences entertains uh, upwards to two to 3,000 students. And that is probably one of our most lucrative um, or productive re, uh, recruitment tools. Um, I would suggest like uh, Dr. Almud Devar asked about UTEP open houses. Um, it's more productive and economical as well to do site visits. So you've got a captive audience. Um, and you don't need to pay a registration fee. Um, I want to thank all of you for participating. Um, it's been a really, really good uh, conference thus far, and enjoy. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, so one more time, just please uh, fill out the survey, um, yes. which you can find at the agenda um, link as well. Um, and thank you for your time. Mm-hmm.